Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Is that how you start videos, right? You're like yeah. uncomfortably smiling. <laughs> like, Good morning, everybody. Uh, no, so today, for our huddle today, we're going to talk about the proper use of a termination and release. All right. Um, we are seeing, as Chris would say it, um, we are seeing way too many of these recently. Um, but I'm not going to get into the reason why we're seeing them more so than um, the appropriate way to use this form, okay? Um, in order to unilaterally terminate a contract, you must have a reason, okay? Um, anybody want to give me some reasons why, why you would terminate a contract? Within due diligence. Within due diligence, that's the vast majority of them, which is actually a pre-selected, right? The buyer... The buyer is giving notice that the buyer is terminating within their due diligence period. Perfect. Failure of a contingency, right? Uh, finance contingency, sale contingency, whatever contingency you make up. Those two are pretty obvious. Anybody give me a reason? Go ahead, Jay. I was going to add another good one. What's a good one? Seller can't provide clear title. Seller can't provide clear title. That'd be a reason for the seller to unilaterally terminate a contract or the buyer actually either one could give notice on that. Where would that go on this form? The seller unable to provide clear title. Would it be C, a default under the agreement by the buyer or seller, or, or another lawful reason? Oh. Right? Um, it depends. That's actually a very good one. So if you're doing it before the closing date, right, it would be for a C, default under the agreement. Or I'm sorry, I said that backwards. It would be D, another lawful reason, right? Seller can't provide clear title. They're not going to, I would assume, at that point. And that's why the buyer would terminate it or they're refusing whatever the cloud on title is. There's about a million different things that could be for. Um, other reasons why somebody would terminate a contract? Outside of contingencies, outside of, of um, due diligence. Property burned down? Would it fall under a default or another lawful reason? Property burning down. Uh, I'll tell you there is terminology in the contract. The seller has a year to make a burned down house back to its condition before they sell it. So that wouldn't be a lawful reason or a default under the, the agreement. Other reasons? Anybody had this one happen? Buyer changed their mind. We're going to give the seller the earnest money. Anybody had that one? Nobody's had that one? You have, Mr. Kevin? Yeah, recently. Recently? Yeah. Outside of due diligence, outside of everything? And you use this, and you use this form? A, uni a unilateral termination? OK. You think that was correct? We probably accepted it because there was no dispute over earnest money, which is the, the next section, right? Um, that is not correct. That is not a default under the agreement. And it is not, the buyer can't give unilateral notice that they changed their mind. It's not a lawful reason. It's not a default. And that's actually, um, it wasn't your file, but it was one exactly like this that happened. And the buyer said, I'm giving the seller $8,000 earnest money, right? This form should not have been used in that situation, all right? There are plenty of situations where this form is good to use, um, but in the instance of I just changed my mind or whatever, you should use the mutual form, all right? It doesn't give a reason. It's just a mutual termination. So let me kind of give you some background on what happened here. So uh, our side, we said buyer, other lawful reason, the buyer changed their mind, okay? All right? We're agreeing to give the earnest money to the seller, right? So $8,000 earnest money to the seller. The agent came back and said, that's not a lawful reason, which they were correct, and your buyer owes us a commission. Oh, wow, oh, wow right? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, going over, I'll jump over to the mutual here real quick, just to show you that in the mutual, 
commissions are addressed. Because if you read through the contract, the terms of the contract, um, either party terminating the contract without cause um, does not relieve their obligation to pay the commission that is the real estate commission that is due on the transaction, right? So the agent was correct. Our agent, before the other side signed the unilateral, said okay and sent a termination over, a, a mutual termination sign giving the money to the, to the, or to the seller. And um, all this was signed, sent over. Oops, sent you the wrong form. I talked to my broker, sent you the wrong form. Here's the correct form. Well, they refused to sign it, right? Make sense? Yes, yes. All right, everything's kind of above board. Zero commission, we're not paying a commission. If it doesn't close, you're not getting paid a commission. Get over yourself, right? You can posture and do all that stuff that you want to. Um, but that's how it is at the end of the day. All right, so going back, Next, the seller said in the initial, if you remember, that the other lawful reason, the buyer changing their mind, wasn't a legitimate reason. They came back and said, we're terminating the contract unilaterally. By the following default under the agreement, the buyer changed their mind. Is that a legal reason to use this for? Would it be? No, yes, I got crickets, <laughs> crickets, any thoughts? Should it be legal? So the, seller, what, the, the buyer sent a unilateral termination, said we're not closing on this, we changed our mind. After what? Uh, outside of all contingencies. Okay. It was a cash deal. Sure. Due diligence was five days, this was two weeks later, okay. right? They put other lawful reason, they changed their mind. That's why they're terminating. They said, we're giving the $8,000 earnest money to the seller, right? Agent comes back and says, that's not a lawful reason for you to terminate. So our agent sent a mutual termination, earnest money, $8,000 to the seller, um, and no commissions to the agents. Because the agent just happened to say, we're gonna sue you for a commission, right? Sue your buyer for a commission, they owe it to us. Whatever, right, get over yourself, that's never gonna happen. Um, then the seller comes back and unilaterally terminates the contract. For C, default under the agreement, the buyer changed their mind and isn't going to close. The question is, is, is that a proper way to use this form? The answer is yes, it actually was. Because the seller has knowledge that the buyer is not going to close on this form. And because they're not going to perform, that is a default by the buyer. They have made it clear. And they have a duty, the seller has a duty to limit their damages yeah. in the transaction. So that is actually a correct way to use the form. Although this agent had the seller sign, the seller sign, but said the buyer gives notice. Well, the buyer's not given notice, the seller is. So that form actually isn't right either. But just wanted to give you a, like a scenario where the default under the agreement, a buyer changing their mind and telling the seller the seller has a duty to unilaterally terminate, limit their damages, and get the property back on the market and sold. So I'm guessing that they sent them that one after they sent it and didn't sign it, right? Yeah, this hasn't been, none of the three have been signed by all parties to disperse the earnest money. So the earnest money is being held up from the seller because the agent wants to sue the buyer for a commission. And no matter how you do it, that commission is never going to come to you, right? It's so the contract, so here's, so here's the deal. When we're talking about commissions and all this stuff and, and suing for it. So in the contract, it's written that if a party defaults on the contract, that they're liable, that they're responsible for the commission to the brokerage, right? Yeah. Um, Century 21 Connect Realty, are we going to sue a buyer on a transaction where they changed their mind and didn't close? No? No, we should. We, we may posture as though we're going to. We may send demand letters. We may do a lot of things. But at the end of the day, nobody wants to be known as the brokerage that sues buyers and sellers. Not to mention, by the time a lawsuit comes through, and we still, if we're on the listing side, we still have this listing. It's back on the market. We get it under contract and sold. What is the brokerage's damages? Right? 
And really the brokerage is doing a disservice to the seller by holding up the $8,000 earnest money that the buyer said take. So like if, if the roles were reversed here, I'll tell you right now, um, our stance as a brokerage would be get over yourself, go get the house sold again. Sorry, it happens, right? Mr. Guggen. So, but why do they rescind it? So if the buyer sent it over and said that the seller can keep earnest money, why would the seller just sign it? Uh, because the broker wants to sue us for a commission. That's the reason. Yeah. Okay. That's not having your client's best interest at heart. That sounds like more. Otherwise, they could have just signed it and got their earnest money. Back. Yes. Okay. They could have signed it. The seller would have received the $8,000 earnest money, no problem. <laughs> On top of that, this is a cash transaction. Remember I brought that up? And the earnest money is being held by the attorney. So the attorney can't make a decision either. The money has to be interpled into the courts if it comes to that. So, I mean, you get into all kinds of different stuff that goes on here. Um, I guess my point to this is, is if you're gonna terminate a contract that is outside of contingencies, Call the broker hotline, reach out to us. Let's make sure that you're doing it the proper way and you're not just randomly filling out a form because if they would have sent the mutual termination to begin with, probably would have alleviated all of this mess where the agent doesn't have an argument to say. Uh, it doesn't automatically terminate the contract. It's just the buyer saying, I want to terminate. All right. So before you terminate a deal outside of contingencies, Make sure that happens. Um, finance contingency, that's a real tricky one. Make sure they can actually get a loan denial letter from their lender. If they don't have that, that could backfire on them as well. Um, but otherwise, that's about all I got. Thanks for listening to me for 10 minutes. I kept it within my 10. Thanks. Thank you.